What's up guys, Nathan here from The Pop Revolution, and in this episode, we're talking about using Flex Pitch in Logic Pro. Intro. All right, I don't wanna waste any time, so we are just gonna jump right into Logic and get going. So first thing I wanna do is just show you very quickly the vocal that we're gonna work on. This comes from the song, I'm Not Here. We put this out in December of 2016, so if you're watching this in like 2020, it's a long time ago. Anyway, we'll have a link for that video in the description down below. But without further ado, here's just the first part of the first verse. I'm not here. I'm only waiting for you, dear. Come out of your room. Step outside the door. Don't. All right, so that's all we're gonna look at in this video. So that way we can just really focus in on using flex pitch. So first thing we wanna do is open up our editor window, which we can do three different ways. We can double click on that region, that's step one, or we can go to this little scissor tool up here, or you could just click E, just click E on your, on your keyboard, just E, it's really easy. That's my favorite. Next thing we need to do is we need to turn flex on. So the way we can do that is go right here, you can see show or hide flex, or we can go into our arrangement window and actually turn on flex globally and look at every single instrument that we can use flex on, it'll allow us to do that. I personally like just opening it up right here because I don't use flex a whole bunch. So now that it's on, we're gonna go to this little pull down menu and go to flex pitch because we don't wanna use flex time. We have flex pitch open. So first thing we need to do is just quickly learn what exactly it is that we're looking at. So the first thing is, if you're familiar with MIDI, if you use MIDI much, this looks a lot like MIDI because it's in piano roll. This is just a representation of the vocal that we're getting. Right? So those are all of our different pitches and stuff. When you hover over a note, you're gonna see these six little handles here. And these are handles you can use to manipulate the vocal. Okay, so let's start with this top middle one, fine pitch. Sounds like what it is. This is gonna adjust fine pitch. So you'll see this number here, this is negative 21. That's basically telling me she's 21 cents flat at this particular note. Now, I'm gonna get to that in a second, but let's let's keep going. Pitch drift on the far left, if you, if you see, I can drag that up and down. That will actually affect the drift at the very beginning. So if you're gonna scoop up or whatnot. Down below that is gain. This is actually a pretty handy tool in certain instances. You can boost this if you really need it louder or take it down if you need it softer. Say for example, you had a moment where uh, you sang one note way louder than the others and you just really kind of want to turn that down but you don't want to use automation. Either way, you could automate it, you could use this tool. It's just another way of doing it. In the middle we have vibrato. Notice what happens when I adjust vibrato. It starts messing with these lines in the middle. Those lines in the middle are going to be super, super important by the way. Form and shift. It's probably just easy, easier for me to show you what this does. Let's just crank it way up. And then let's crank it way down. Okay, it basically affects the tonal characteristic of the voice. Um, it has a lot to do with overtones and stuff, I guess. You might use this if you're into EDM or electronic music or rap. Uh, I'm not sure, I never use it. Then we have pitch drift on the back, which is the exact same thing as pitch drift on the top. It's just that it's on the back end of the note, okay? I highly recommend that you have advanced editing activated. If you don't know how to do that, you just go into your preferences, go to advanced and make sure show advanced tools and advanced editing, enable those, okay? That will allow you then to have two different tools you can use. So this left one is just the pointer tool uh, and the right one I want is my scissor tool. And now when I hit the command key, it will allow me to make cuts on these notes, okay? Remember how I said that this middle line right in here is going to be super, super important. Well, notice that when this says negative 21, that makes it seem like she's saying this really flat. But notice the line here, it's way down, okay? This is really, really down. You want this line like right in the dead center of this. That means that is the absolute most perfect pitch you could do. So what I'm gonna do is go right about here where it's starting to kind of get normal, okay, where the drift is, is scooping up. I'm gonna make a cut right there. Now notice what happens, negative nine. That is a lot more on point than negative 21. It makes a huge deal. Typically when we're talking about pitch, anywhere between zero and a negative eight or positive eight, those are good numbers to work with. You don't wanna go too much below negative eight or positive eight. Positive eight, 
I would maybe even say you don't want to be too much above five on the sharp side of things. Things that are sharp are a lot more noticeable than flat. And it also depends on the singer, it depends on the arrangement and all sorts of different things and what part of the voice that they're singing in. A lot of things to take into consideration. And something else I want to point out is this was a really good performance. So I'm not going to have to do a whole ton of stuff to just really make this sound different, okay? That's something you should really be aiming for is really aim to have great performances. So now that's negative 40. So I can kind of start dragging that up so it's a little less. That works, okay? And now notice this is 24, but this line is really, really low on it. So I'm gonna make a cut right there. And now notice what it is. Four, that's a big difference, right? So use your scissor tool to kind of splice away at things because what this does is kind of takes the average of everything and then that's how you get the fine pitch that you're gonna get. So you don't necessarily wanna go with that. So if you need to and you wanna be a lot more detail oriented about what part of the pitch is accurate and what part of the pitch you're working with, you can cut these parts in the piano roll. The biggest problem with doing this though is that on occasion, you will get some popping and clicking, which basically is gonna sound like a crossfade was not added or the crossfade wasn't put in the right place. This is one of the biggest downfalls to using uh, using flex pitch. This is one of the biggest reasons I actually stopped using flex pitch because I was having too many issues with getting pops and clicks on my vocal. If you can get away with using this without having those issues, that's great. Okay, so that's just something to keep in mind. Okay, so let's just really quickly edit this thing. So. I rarely put it to perfect because you don't want it to sound artificial. If that's what you're going for, and you want everything to just sound perfect, you can just right click or left click and set all to perfect pitch, okay? You're still gonna need to tweak stuff. So even if you do that, you'll still need to tweak stuff. Don't think you can just do that and walk away. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and start just walking through. Now, notice these lines down here, they kind of start down and it goes up and then down. I'm pretty sure that I need to cut those, yeah. So that kind of affects the... I'm only waiting for... All right, so that's... Now, as far as the vibrato key, I only ever use the vibrato handle to reduce vibrato. I never use it to add vibrato. It sounds super artificial. But here's a great example of where this line starts up here and then it comes down and then it drifts down. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and make a cut right about there and a cut right about there. Notice what happens. It just adjusted everything. And now I can go. All right. And. Come out of. And I'm gonna cut there as well. I'm just gonna go through and quickly just finish this so we can listen to what this sounds like. Okay, and this is a great example too. When you see this happen, happens, it just means it didn't analyze it properly, okay? And so you need to make a cut there so you can actually split this up. And then again, right here, this is such a huge pitch drift. Let's get rid of that, cut that. Don't look back. There we go. That's a lot better. All right, so let's listen to this from the beginning. I'm not here. I'm only waiting for you to come out of your room. Step outside the door. Don't look back. All right, so let's listen to this. Don't Back. That you can hear that click. That's like there's there's a fade that wasn't accurately put in there. I think it happened Come out of your room. right there as well. Out of your room. So that's one of the biggest downfalls of flex pitch. If you can get away with using it and not having those issues, because I know some some of my friends don't have any issues with this. They've never had issues. And when I tell them, they're like, I don't get it. But I've gone online to forums and all sorts of people have this issue and it seems to be an issue with flex pitch. So that is flex pitch. If you have any questions, if I didn't cover something properly, I don't want to assume I just did it perfectly. If you have any questions or comments, leave those down below. And of course, click that subscribe button because you know you want to. We'll see you next time.